Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. There's a reason why I enjoyed the Aldani arc in Andor a lot, and it wasn't just because it was so well done, it was actually because the Imperial Army was featured instead of its more popular rival service. Well, not rival, as we'll explain. I'm talking about the Stormtrooper Corps. You know, the boys in white with their gleaming plastoid armor. They're all over the Compnor posters being plastered on every town hall across the Empire. The supposedly endless Stormtrooper legions were as much of a visual weapon as they were an actual fighting force. The Empire depended on images like the Stormtrooper, like the Imperial-class Star Destroyer and the Death Star to frighten the galaxy into compliance. Which, of course, led to some questionable design choices. Take a look at the Stormtrooper helmet, for instance. It was overly cumbersome, and it provided a questionable amount of production. But it also made the Empire's enforcers completely faceless. This makes the trooper's job easier so that they don't have to make eye contact when applying ample amounts of suppression onto the faces of the innocent masses. More importantly, it made it a lot harder for a person to recognize an individual stormtrooper or see the human behind the armor, which of course then makes communicating with them a lot more difficult. The Empire was all about divide and conquer. It was about us versus them, the Imperials and the non-Imperials that can't be trusted. And if you don't allow these two groups to mingle, it becomes even easier to split them apart. The bigger idea is that the stormtroopers are not only a force of individuals, but more like one gigantic security organism, a wall that Emperor Palpatine built around himself and his Imperial insiders, something that would be impossible to fight and destroy. The stormtroopers actually remind me of the uh, Persian heavy infantry unit known as the Immortals. They weren't really immortal, of course, but the myth goes that whenever an immortal fell in combat, he was immediately replaced, keeping the unit size steady at 10,000. Emperors, dictators, totalitarians, they always love huge displays of military force. Chances are, if you see a military that is constantly parading its oversized and overpowered war machines in impressive public displays, they most likely are compensating for something else, like a very weak economy or just a lack of support from the public. These dictators use these military displays to convince not only their enemies, but their own populace that the ruling party is strong and in control. The idea is to make resistance seem futile, so that even if the majority of the populace hates the dictator and wants to remove them, they feel isolated and alone, and also terrified by the big tanks. For obvious reasons, a lot of Star Wars shows seem to rely heavily on the use of stormtroopers. Most of these creators are what I would call rebel or New Republic sympathizers. They wanted to use the stormtroopers because it dehumanizes the Empire and provides an iconic symbol for the rebellion to rally against. But was all this hype for the stormtrooper corps warranted? Were they actually that important to the Empire's survival and success? I would argue no. You see, the stormtrooper corps were the direct descendants of the Grand Army of the Republic. This massive force of clones first popularized the white gleaming plastoid armor look and was seen in a very favorable light by the core regions of the galaxy. After all, the clones had fought off the Separatist threat despite being outnumbered many times over, and tales of their courage and sacrifice during the Clone Wars were spread all across the galaxy by Kampor, the Republic's version of Kopnor. Palpatine was looking to capitalize on the popularity of these white-clad soldiers when he created the Stormtrooper Legions. But the main reason that he even shifted from the clone troopers to conscripts and volunteers was for cost-saving reasons, of course. The reality is when you're no longer involved in a galactic-wide war on several different fronts, maintaining such a massive and heavily armed military force of elite soldiers is just completely impractical and costly. And that's exactly what the stormtroopers were. They were the elite infantry units of the Empire, and now they had no enemies to fight. And these guys cost a lot of money. They had their own separate academies, which lengthened training time. They also had their own unique armor and access to a lot of heavy weapons because they were technically shock troopers. You know, heavy infantry designed to take on the enemy at their strongest point or exploit any openings in the enemy's lines. They were really only supposed to be used in specialized roles. They were never supposed to be everywhere and definitely not supposed to be patrolling towards the boardwalks. Knowing the Empire's challenges and ambitions, it's pretty obvious that the Stormtrooper legions were never really the answer. So most nations with large military forces actually rely heavily on a pool of reservists. These are basically civilians with normal jobs and normal lives, and they also have military training. And should there be an emergency or war, they can be called back to their units, and these reservist units can be deployed a lot quicker than uh, one you build from the ground up. And that's sort of how the Empire was structured as well. While they weren't considered reservists, the majority of the Empire's manpower and infantry fighting power came from two groups, the Imperial Army Trooper and the Imperial Naval Trooper. 
These two types of infantry units were a lot cheaper to train and maintain, and therefore they fit the role of Peacekeeper a lot better. Also, the average Imperial was a lot more likely to run into these guys than a Stormtrooper. Technically speaking, the Stormtrooper Corps wasn't even its own service branch. It fell underneath the Imperial Army's umbrella, and legions were usually deployed on Imperial naval assets like Star Destroyers with the support of Imperial Army Walkers. By the way, guys, if you want to see a more accurate depiction of stormtroopers and their relation to the Imperial Army and Navy, check out any like Timothy Zahn book with Thrawn and his early years in the Empire. They do a great job at showing how all of this works, basically. That's actually how I became a huge fan of the Imperial Army. They just sounded like a more realistic military force. One built for the actual mission of the Empire, which was to hold as much territory as humanly possible. And while their design is a lot less striking, it's a lot more practical. For one, they aren't wearing all white, which is already a step in the right direction. Their armor is also much less robust and only protects the most vital parts of the body, making it much cheaper to equip them, more importantly, giving them a bit more mobility and less weight to carry. There's always kind of this trade-off between how fast you can run and how long you can run and how much protection you have on your body. And if we take a look at the interactions between the Imperial Army troopers, we can see that they're all pretty normal individuals, normal guys doing a job. Now you might have one or two overly political and zealous Imperial officers. Your empire needs you! Troopers forward! Solo, get up! We're almost there! Just over that last bridge! Victory is <laughs> But they always get fragged trying to be heroes on the battlefield. That or their own men turn against them when they go a little bit too buck wild. Unlike the stormtroopers who received a heavy dose of indoctrination and conditioning while being trained, Imperial Army troopers basically focused on being soldiers. There was no political indoctrination for these units, and most of them were actually former planetary defense soldiers who basically didn't have a job after the Clone Wars ended. Being able to fight in the system that you were born in is an added bonus, something that you might not get with a Stormtrooper Legion who was basically being shifted around constantly to different hotspots. The Empire might use prison slave labor, nationalized resources, and other credit-saving measures to reduce the cost of their military, but one entirely unavoidable cost for them was the salary they had to pay to each one of their soldiers. And just like in the old Roman Empire, wherever the legion's payroll was stationed, that's where the garrison would be deployed, and that's where the towns would eventually spring up around those areas, because there was a troop presence keeping the area pacified. If you take a look at the city of London 2,000 years ago, that's exactly how it started as a settlement. So you see, the main role of the Imperial Army was usually garrison duty. They usually arrived on planet as an occupational force, and also they were considered a cheap source of labor. They were usually the ones who built or at least supervised the construction of new military bases and infrastructure. If the local commandant was competent enough, then the Imperial Army could also generate revenue covering their expenses by running businesses or extracting resources. This is something a Stormtrooper unit can't really do because, again, they're on the move constantly. If an Imperial Army garrison can generate enough revenue, they could even cover the cost of their operation, which is great. Now, Imperial Army troopers admittedly are not as highly trained for combat situations as a Stormtrooper. They're not going around fighting different types of rebel groups all the time. Most Imperial Army troopers were actually expected to fight from behind heavy fortifications. Less training was concentrated on maneuver warfare, and if the Imperial Army had to carry out an offensive like they did on Mimbam, they favored combined army operations and used firepower to overwhelm the enemy instead of just small units of heavy assault infantry. I'm gonna argue that the Imperial Army probably had much better military culture that was rooted in some relatively standard infantry tactics and doctrine that would be very familiar to soldiers here on Earth. The Stormtroopers, on the other hand, were really fanatic, and a lot of the individuals who made it into the Stormtrooper Legion were chosen for that trait, but also because of the conditioning we talked about before. And worse yet, they weren't loyal to the Empire, they were loyal directly to Emperor Palpatine, so that's a problem. As a result, you have these Commissar-style officers who are more interested in delivering glory for their god Emperor than actually protecting their men and completing missions. The Imperial Army had a much different way of operation. If we take a look at the Aldani Garrison or the 224th Imperial Armored Division, the enlisted men were allowed to speak back to their officers and even question their commands or give requests to them. May I speak plainly, sir? Plainly and quickly. I fear morale might be crushed by having anything more than an essential roster down here tomorrow night. Just wondering what our objective is, Lieutenant. Bring peace and prosperity to the galaxy. 
And that's just not how stormtroopers would communicate with one another. As a matter of fact, there was usually very little non-mission related communication among stormtroopers in the same units. And a lot of times people could serve with the same unit for years and never have a real conversation. And that is again because uh, the Empire really frowned on non-essential chit-chat during missions. It's actually well documented that later in the war, the ISB would monitor the helmet comms of every stormtrooper and watch out for potential dissent amongst the ranks or disciplinary issues. I mean, the Empire didn't even want the stormtroopers to learn each other's names. They basically had these TK designation numbers like the clones, but even the clones were allowed to have nicknames. And if you look at how the Imperial Army troopers call each other, well, it's like this. Corporal Kimsey. Sir. Enjoying the view? Yes, sir. The Imperial Army troopers, on the other hand, call each other by their ranks and names, and they clearly are having conversations. They're even playing card games, which shows us that they're normal people, which makes them ultimately a more flexible and functional fighting force, in my opinion, whereas the stormtroopers are just basically a bunch of robot guys. Now, I get a lot of crap for this, but I'm gonna stick with it. Taraman is classic stormtrooper material, and you see in the scene during the Aldani heist, where Skeen is supposed to cover him. Everyone's like, oh, Skeen didn't do a good job. No, he didn't do a great job, but Taraman really screwed up by running out into the open in a direct line to try to save his commanding officer. It actually makes no sense for him to do this. That is typical stormtrooper behavior, indoctrination. No regard for their own safety, run in straight lines to try to solve problems. So as of now in Andor, the Empire is still relatively benign compared to what it will become in just a few years. But as the rebel threat grows and the Empire continues to respond with heavy-handed reactive measures like the P.O.R.D., things will quickly spiral out of control. Eventually, the Empire would actually increase the amount of stormtrooper units it had in the field when compared to the Imperial Army trooper units. This could be one of the reasons why we so frequently see stormtroopers in the films and television. As things grew worse for Palpatine, he would kind of double down on how brutal he would be against the rebels. And he needed devoted soldiers like the stormtrooper legions to carry out commands that most likely Imperial Army troopers would want to avoid. I really hate the term strongman being used to describe dictators and authoritarians. I understand it's kind of a mocking term, but the reality is like authoritarians are oftentimes the weakest and most terrified individuals out there in the political world. And you can see that by how they have this intense desire to control everything around them, including what their prime military force looks like. And what you'll end up noticing is that a lot of these elite forces like the Stormtrooper Corps is so heavily uh, micromanage that it no longer becomes an effective fighting force. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about how effective the stormtroopers are. You have like Obi-Wan saying that they're very accurate and then, you know, the rest of the movie they're just missing the whole time. I actually lean more towards the fact that stormtroopers are pretty incompetent in a lot of important ways. They might be really good at, you know, stripping down their rifles, keeping their bunks clean and Maybe they have good aim, I don't know, but it seems like they definitely don't have the ability to be individual actors on the battlefield and, you know, basically make their own decisions, smart combat decisions, once they're cut off from command or the person who's giving them, uh, basically, orders. But anyway, guys, that is my assessment of the situation. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Are you on Team Imperial Army Trooper, like me, or are you on Team Stormtrooper? They definitely look cool. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our Andor coverage. And as usual, my name is Alan, and my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.